set up awarenesses, but please make sure that we respond to the questions that are sent to your departments. Um, remember, honorable members, these proceedings are live. People can see what you are doing in this house out there. And when it comes to the questions over and over again, we have to provide extensions for questions. And you are given 10 days, 10 days to answer the question when it has been asked. So I, I want uh, the Honorable MCs to go back and consider the manner in which they are dealing with the questions. Uh, thank you, Honorable Members. We move um, uh, uh, to the Honorable Chairperson of Committees shall now take the chair. Secretary shall read the motion. That will be granted for the House to confer the final vote in Mondays on the following section 76, case 1, National Health Insurance Bill B11B for 2019, National Land Transport Amendment Bill B7F for 2016, National Road Transport Traffic Amendment Bill B7B for 2020. Regulation of Transport Bill 1 of 2020. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Chief Chairs, I move. Any discussion? None. Any objection? None. Honorable. Oh, okay, Honorable. It's an objection. Um, thank you, Honorable Chair of Chairs, Acting Speaker. My objection relates to the fact that we are being asked here in a single vote to vote on six different mandates. Um, and that cannot be right because each member might support some of them and not support others and so on and so on. So we should separate the voting for each one um, and we can't do them all together. That is my objection. Thank you. Thank you, Acting Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Generals. <coughs> Uh, continue, Honorable Speaker, because there is no rule that prevent that the report should not be tabled in that way. So, Honorable, may now address the House on the final vote demanded on the National Health Insurance Bill B11B 2019 and the Land Transport Amendment Bill B7F. 2016 National Traffic Management Bill and Economic Regulation on Transport Bill B1B 2020. Honorable Speaker, may. Thank you, Honorable Chair Chase, Honorable Premier, Honorable Honorable Chief of the Free State, uh, Chief Whip of the Free State Legislature, Honorable Members of this Distinguished House, the House has adopted the reports on the National Health Insurance Bill, B11B of 2019, National Land Transport Amendment Bill B7F of 2016, the National Road Traffic Amendment Bill B7B of 2020 and Economic Regulation of Transport Bill uh, uh, B1B of 2020 as proposed by the 
portfolio committees on education, health and social services, and public works, infrastructure, roads, transport and human settlements, respectively. The purpose of the NHL bill is to enable the department to buy quality health care services on behalf of the people of the Republic of South Africa. These services will be provided by health care professionals and providers in both the public and private healthcare facilities and will integrate them into one healthcare system that serves the needs of the South Africans. The purpose of the National Land Transport Amendment B, B7F of 2016 is to provide for the final transformation and restructuring of the National Land Transport System of the Republic and to provide for incidental matters. The purpose of the National Road Traffic Amendment Bill B7B of 2022, amongst others, provide for the suspension and cancellation of the registration of an examiner for driving licenses or an examiner of vehicles. If such person has been convicted of an offence listed in Schedule 1 or 2 of the Criminal Procedure Act, uh, 90 of 1977 or has a direct or indirect conflict of interest. Also to provide for the registration and grading of training centers. The purpose of the economic um, regulation of transport bill um, B1B of 2020 is to consolidate the economic regulation of transport within a single framework and policy to establish the Transport Economic Regulator, to establish the Transport Economic Council, to make consequential amendments to various uh, other acts, and to provide for related incidental matters. I wish to assure the House that both portfolio committees has complied, has complied with all processes related to the consideration of these things. On our patrol of shares in compliance with the mandating procedures of provinces act, I now place this case before this plenary to decide on the final voting mandates. I thank you. What does the honorable speaker propose? That the House vote in favor of the voting mandates. Any discussion? Any objection? Yes. yes. Let's hear Honorable Peter, Honorable. Thank you, um, Honorable Chair of Chairs. Um, the Democratic Alliance opposes and rejects the, the uh, National Health Insurance Bill B11B of 2019 in its totality, and I will submit the sub submission on the reason. I will submit the report on the reason. Uh, thank you, Chair. Chairs, also just um, uh, also just uh, note that the Freedom from Plus also uh, rejects the bill in its entirety. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We note your objections. We read them down, but in terms of those who agree. The majority have agreed that uh, the bill must go through. The speaker shall now take the chair. of public importance in terms of Rule 71. We proceed uh, to the discussion on matter of public importance as proposed by Honorable Clute. I now recognize Honorable Clute to introduce the discussion for three minutes. Uh, 
Ja, dankie speaker. Dit is nie normaal dat kinders weer straat verloop dier die wol om by hulle skoel uit te kom nie. Dit is nie normaal dat reel dier mense sy huise vloe nie. Dit is nie normaal dat mense soms weke sonder water is omdat die regerende partij in daar die raad eenvoudig nie basis in stand om in kant te nie. Speaker, here are the reasons, I call it excuses, we will hear today as to why our people are experienced from seeing water and sanitation challenges. We know them by now. We are a water scarce province, old and dilapidated infrastructure, a lack of dams, and even global warming. Speaker, there is geen rede hoe kom die vrystaat en waterskaart vir funksie hoef te wees nie. Why do I say this? Water losses in the province last financial year amounts to 900 million rand. It's a crisis speaker under this current compensation. Mongol, 45% lost. Machabeng, 55% lost. Letsimeng, 62. It gets worse. Mokaka, 71. Here's a shocker. Pampulalela, 83% water lost. On average, we lose more than 53% of water in this province in our municipalities. Speaker, voedsel sekuriteit het een boekie. Dis water sekuriteit en dis ingedraan. Again, we should be a water sekuriteit, but on the INC we are. Skuld aan waterrade 5,5 miljard rand. Speaker, mense blij langs rivieren met verweken in water nie. Die gemoos in Parijs, kontrakteer op kontrakteer wat aangestel word in waterwerke daar sel, maar mense is sonder water. Dit is wat BEE en die rechtstellende aksie aan ons mense doen. Dit is die ANC of sy nieuw apartheid. Sommige kaders word reik, terwijl ons mense krepeer. En dat jou bengbach inwoon is angstig vir die volgende waterkrisis wat gewoonlik vir daar lang aanhoud. Daar is self die municipaliteit en rauwe wil in onwettige stoomwaters, in onwettige in stoomwaterstelsels. Want jare en jare sy ANCBR beteken geen instand in die missie water wat hulle trok. Maar die burgemeester hou een bizo op een bizo sonder enige verandering. Ek weet ons gaan vandag weer een lesing kruid oor apartheid. ANC, dit is hier die skuld, water word gemors. Dit is hier die skuld dat die wil in ons straat loop. Dit is hier die skuld dat kinders dier die wil in ons straat in die woon om die skoel uitkom. Jylle is die probleem. Jylle die vrou staat rot en kaal besteel en die spiesers gaan vir julle straf. Baie dank. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Premier, members of the provincial legislature, please receive my greetings. It is known fact that you cannot survive without water. We also need more than water, but a safe and sustainable supply of water. By a safe water, we mean heavy water in our homes when needed, and such water must be free from contamination. The world is experiencing changes climate that is destroying, drying up, and contaminating water sources. The growing global population has made people to lack basic drinking water, especially those in the rural areas. We know for a fact that the world is not on track to meet sustainable development goals such as sustainability and hygiene for every person. The Honourable Speaker, there is no denying that access to clean water is essential for the well-being of individuals and all our people. It is also true that often women and girls are the ones who bear the burden of collecting water for their households. Does this expose women and girls to abuse and unpaid work? 
women can henceforth suffer less if we increase access to clean water sources through piped water and boreholes as this will reduce the burden of water collection. The World and Free State has to implement the water harvesting system for our communities so that in rainy seasons we are able to harvest water for future needs. As leaders, we need to promote water conservation for the sake of the future generations. One of those members would remember that the virus was spreading through being in proximity to an infected person and inhaling, inhaling, inhaling the droplets generation when they call or sneeze or touching a surface where these droplets land and the touching one's face or nose can just imagine the danger our people got exposed to without running and drinking drinkable water. This makes them extremely vulnerable. The competitiveness of our country usually released on its economic infrastructure and as a good social infrastructure facilitated opportunities for social mobility while improving the length and equality of human life. We have not had major structural, mechanical or electrical failures of our water infrastructure system in the province. It must, however, be noted that the quality and reliability of water supply system continue to decline in small towns and rural areas in our province, and this is a matter of general a great concern. Our provincial infrastructure is getting damaged due to the increased theft, vandalism, and lack of security where the, these assets are located. The quality of wastewater treatment system are also declining due to various weaknesses that have to be arrested. Honourable members, a lot of our municipalities are struggling to get their water and sanitation infrastructure to be functional. This is very this is this very same house has undertaken oversight visits through its portfolio committee to some of this collapsing infrastructure. This same house has directed that the municipality should pay a special attention to deliberate clean and drinkable water. It is the obligation of the municipalities to ensure wastewater treatment plants are maintained and necessary security measures should be implemented to protect the investment made by public resources. We have directed this municipality to ensure that there is no spillages in our rivers to avoid water contamination, even though the problems are so huge that they will not be solved in one financial year. Members of the public and commercial establishment must also be held accountable for polluting our water and sanitation system. We need to raise awareness to encourage our communities to guard and protect the infrastructure as government does not have a budget to fix after every vandalism. The fact that average domestic water consumption in our country is approximately 237 liters per person per day, while the world average is approximately 173 liters per person per day, confirm that they are overusing water than is needed by it. A lot of wood of our people still need to access running water, although stress mass made is opening access. We must also hold our municipalities and municipal officials accountable to water leakages experience as water leakages is not only about waste of clean and drinkable water. It is also 
about waste of lot of insufficient uh, funds used to process the raw water to clean water that run in our taps. As a province, we need to declare war on water leakages so that we save water for the upper, for prosperity. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, I'm happy that the ANC government is putting in place a capacity building program on the standard operating procedures for municipalities and other communities groundwater developers so that our water, water resources are protected. Uh, that the municipality will be supported through the identification of areas of the country with groundwater capacity and heavy have potential for further sustainable exploitation to service our people. The Department of Water and Sanitation has confirmed that it has programs to help municipalities to making greater use of groundwater and the regulations will be strengthened to in, in this regard. Through the oversight visit we undertook as the Free State Legislature, we are happy that there are capacity building programs for municipality officials to manage water and sustain sanitation infrastructure. We need to do away with outsourcing and servicing of water works and waste water treatment plant to save scarce many our municipality are spending. The government has done well to expand access to water to more than 89% of all South Africans and 84% have access to sanitation services. We are making inroads uh, in doing away with apartheid legacy water a single tap used to service the whole village. The government of ANC has made sanitation accessible to majority of households and opposed to what government of apartheid did by subjecting our people to dehumanizing and degrading situation where one toilet used to be used by the entire community. The socio-economic empowerment of our people in, in the provinces means redressing the legacy of apartheid and transformation of society to so, so that the dignity of our people is restored. We must also appreciate it, the sincerity and respect to government. The government of the NC gives the people of this country in that it is able to admit that more still needs to be done regarding water and sanitation. The ANC government has accepted that there is still the challenge of water waste and pollution of water as well as failing infrastructure. Honorable Speaker, we all know that great strides have been made to ensure access to clean drinking water and that is a credit to that we need to give government of the day. Even though the Department of Water and Sanitation is responsible for the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goal 6, which focuses on ensuring access to water and sanitation for all, access to safe water, sanitation and hygiene is the most basic human need for health and well-being. Hence, the responsibility cannot be left to the Department of Government alone. We all need to take the responsibility and protect these scarce resources and avoid politicking unfairly about it. Honorable Speaker, water is, is, is life. I thank you. Honorable Permission. I haven't started, don't start the time. <laughs> the 
clock must tick once I start. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Speaker. Let me also welcome the opportunity and greetings to the honorable members of the Executive Council, led by the Premier of the province. The topic is around water and sat sanitation. I want to kickstart the debate by indicating, because it's very important, because this subject is highly te technical. We must make sure that we speak from the facts. We don't just speak for the sake of speaking. The provision of safe and readily available water is important for public health and poverty reduction. According to Stats SA, General Household Survey of 2021, go to it, the percentage of household with access to an improved source of water increased from 84.4% to 88.7% between 2002 and 2021. That was a step towards the right direction. Stats are showing us that. It is notable that the percentage of households whose members usually wash hands with soap and water increased notably between 2019 and 2021 from 43%, 43.6% 43 to 59.1%. Another step towards the right direction. Remember, our people did not have access to free and clean water. And stats are showing us that improvement. You can't verify that. It is a matter that is there on the record. It's for you to acknowledge. Perhaps you don't want to acknowledge what good has been done. Unfortunately, the award in terms of delivery has to go to the present government in terms of changing the situation and turn the situation around. On water, according to the, to the general household, tap water inside their dwellings, off-site on an on-site was most common amongst households, preferably in the Western Cape, Gauteng, and the Free State, and the list was in Limpopo. That shows how skewed our situation, our people have been exposed to this in the past because resources were actually plucked to a particular area, which is the province. And the ANC is struggling now to turn the situation around and some are still holding that, truth be told. That's why all the time you are making reference of that because you want the status quo to remain. It can't be. It has to be changed. And thank you very much for getting into that state as the government of the ANC to make sure that you turn the situation around. It can't be left unattended. The insufficient water infrastructure maintenance and investment, recurrent drought driven by climatic variation, inequities in access to water and sanitation, I want to pause there. Perhaps we forget, and I'm later going to talk about that in terms of the dams. What impact does the climate change cause to the dams that we're having in the country? And let me take you back. Understand why we do have this type of a challenge of a climate change in Africa as a continent. And Africa as a continent is one of those countries that, were, that are least developed. The scientists will tell you, carbon emission is the cause of the climate change. Now who brought the industrialized countries are the ones that put us into this quagmire. 
Now today, we play a clean way of doing things and say, ah, uh -uh, it is this government led by honorable policy Dugwana that is failing us. Forgetting that it is the same apartheid that has used the industrialized country so that we must finally have this em emission and then of course experience this climate change. It is not out of the making of the people of Africa to experience this climate change, but it is the industrialized countries that has cost us this quagmire. Don't run away from that fact, it's a fact. That's why when, during the COP17, when the countries of the world met, you have to assist the underdeveloped countries in mitigating the climate change. And some of these countries which we support stand up and support today, refuse that. The fact of the matter is that they are the cause of that. The, if I go to the water, the country's water security is mainly re reliant on fresh surface water with groundwater and return flows underutilized. There are currently 5,551 registered dams with a total gross storage capacity of 33,291 million cubic liters. Of these registered dams, 4,294 are small, less than 12 meters, serving farms and municipalities. These smaller dams play a critical role in local water security and climate resilience. Go to Figapacho. When you go to Figapacho, the premier leading the province must tell you, or that dam is challenged with the mud sludge. And you may think that the level of water there is at this particular level when it is not there. Through you, Honorable Speaker, Ndatele Tuka should know it better that when you go there and look at the levels of water, it gives you the impression that there is much more water when there is nothing. It is in the state that we find ourselves in. And when this government seeks to strive and ensure the people gets it. It gets attacked all the time. Forgetting that the root cause of this thing is you. Most of water in South Africa, fresh water comes from the catchment that received the highest rainfall. There are 22 strategic water sources areas occupying 8% of the land. However, these provide 50% of the surface run off. The strategic water source areas support the water needs of approximately 60% of the population, 67% of the national economic activity, and supply approximately 70% of the irrigation. Ah, there it is. It was deliberate that there should be dams to assist the previously advantage to continue with irrigation. To continue with it, with the irrigation. That's why you find most of them, they've got small dams next. To give them an opportunity to continue. By the way, we don't expect that the people will just be happy when things must be turned around. ANC government proceed and push forward. A people cannot wait any longer. They want water. It's painful. People can't wait, wait any longer because access to water is a constitutional right. Be it as it may, but the people must get it. And I was talking to, through you, Honorable Speaker, I was talking to Honorable Jankelson, 
When you go to Kwakwa, not Kwakwa, Kwakwa, you pass a place where you see water coming from Katsi Dam, the Lesotho Highland. And I took a specific interest, and I always do when I pass there. And I said, but are these people that are taking water out of their pay? And Honorable Jankal said, yes, they are regulated their pay. I stand to do my own research that they are all paying. Can I be protected uh, if I trigger Honorable Jankelson to speak? Honorable Jankelson, don't apology. respond, please. Uh, let's go to sanitation. Let's go to sanitation. I want to have you all in the Yes. An accusation is made to say there are spillages all over. There are spillages all over. Let me tell you the history. One, do not give the Africans in their own land to own a place and have access to roads and have access to sanitation. That's why, historically, the government and the ANC had to deal with pit toilets created by the system. And when you go to a place like Kwakwa, through you, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Cleanance, when you go to a place like Kwakwa, Kwakwa, not Kwakwa, Kwakwa, when you go there, if you do infrastructure, it's not going to be easy because the place is mountainous. By the way, the people of South Africa and the Free State were chased into Kwakwa through the homeland system, be making it very difficult to improve their infrastructure. It's not by choice for the people to be there. It's through the system that failed around the homeland system. They failed. Yes, we acknowledge there are spillages. But please, for goodness sake, don't forget that you are a cause of this. We are in this mess because of you. We are in this mess because you contributed into that, and we have to take law. Remember to turn around the entire Kwakwa sewer system through the infrastructure is going to be very difficult. I need also to indicate that, you know, our townships were actually placed five kilometers away from town. And those that understand the infrastructure, the amount of sewer that you want to pump must also take into cognizance the type of material you use that is going to pump that sewer. Most of the townships, the pipes that were used, even today, they are smaller. That's why they continuously burst. Truth be told, who created that? If we are a country that wants to move together, we must acknowledge that and say there has to be pumping of resources to make sure that we turn the lives of our people around. So, because they feel that it is now time for them to reclaim power, it's not going to happen, sorry. Let's come to the free state for the sake of time, Speaker. I will be pleased. Uh, 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 Let me go to uh, 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 the free state quickly. When a doctor from the University of the Free State, Patrick Otomo, addresses the water scarcity in Kwako, located in Maluti Apofu municipality, that we would expect that Kwaka should have water, especially because it's located next to Stags Fontaine Dam. But that's not the situation. The problem 
The Honorable, through you, Speaker, Honorable Chabalala will tell you, it was so difficult to get pipes from Stackspace Dam to go to Kwakwa because of the location of that area. I'm going to squeeze now. As I conclude, Speaker, the Department of Cocta must continue to put money in assisting the, our municipalities. Because the challenge of scarce water, we all know it's there. But for our people to receive a clean water and have an access to water, it's very important that they must be assisted with resources. Thank you very much. Honorable Uh, Honourable Speaker, while the Free State is considered to be a dry province, in fact it has an abundance of water resources within and on its borders. The four largest dams in South Africa are located around the Free State, the Gharib, Van der Kloof, Sterfontein, Faal and Blumhof dams are all situated in this area. This week, the, last week, these dams were all at over 70% capacity, with some being over 90% full and Sterkfontein being on 99%. In addition to these valuable resources, the Lesotho Highlands Water Scheme also releases water which runs through the Free State. While we have this abundance of water resources within our area, we are currently not in a drought situation and we still find that 49% of our residents have no tap water, according to the latest census figures. They might have taps, but only half of them have water. This is an absolute betrayal of the most basic human right to which our people are entitled. Not only are our people being denied their right to clean water, but in addition, we see that our economy is being negatively impacted because of municipalities' inability to provide a reliable supply of water. Increasing numbers of industries which rely on water are simply closing down or downsizing with a loss of jobs and increasing unemployment and poverty. The health of the people of the Free State is being affected by the quality of or the lack of water. The fact is that although this is a water scarce province and we do have relatively low rainfall and droughts from time to time, we do have significant water resources available to us. In a recent status report to Parliament, the Department of Water and Sanitation gave the following facts. There are 71 water treatment plants in the Free State, all are operational, but some experience intermittent challenges. The quality of drinking water in many municipalities is bad in terms of chemical and microbiological compliance, which means that although the water treatment plant is supplying water, it is often not of good quality. This is not surprising since the water being extracted from rivers is completely polluted with sewage. Often municipalities do not order the necessary chemicals on time due to cash flow challenges or they order the incorrect chemicals. 64 out of the 106 Free State Waste Water Treatment plants, plants managed by 17 municipalities are completely dysfunctional, meaning that over 60% of the sewage of the entire Free State ends up in our water sources. With only 49% of our population having running tap water, many must rely on these polluted water sources to fetch water. Even the 50 boreholes in Kwakwa, which have been referred to boreholes, the 50 boreholes in Kwakwa cannot be used due to sewage contamination. 
Ten municipalities submitted corrective action plans, but none had been implemented as at the 31st of March this year. The highest number of systems in a critical condition are owned and managed by Mangaum, Machabeng, and Maluti Apufung, which account for 23 of the 64 dysfunctional wastewater treatment plants. The department has issued 37 directives of uh, two municipalities in the Free State. Despite these directives, compliance letters and warnings, it appears that many municipalities simply do not have the capacity nor the will to deal with the challenges around water and sanitation services. And the provincial executive of the ANC is equally failing to intervene in these dysfunctional municipalities, leaving residents simply to suffer. In many cases, this is as a result of the neglect of maintenance over many years. The internal water reticulation systems are old and should already have been replaced or upgraded, but this has not happened. An additional factor hampering the supply of water to communities is load shedding. Despite lots of promises by this free state government, we see that municipalities are equally unable to properly manage the effects of load shedding. Most disturbing of all is the fact that about half of the treated water in the free state is lost through leaks. This really is a disaster. Maintaining and operating the water treatment plants at optimal level, which is crucial due to the state of the raw water, is very expensive. To lose almost half of this expensive treated drinking water through leaks is unforgivable. In its report, the department states, I quote, this indicates poor operation and maintenance of infrastructure leading to unacceptably high physical losses. Per person, South Africa is using almost double the amount of water per day than the international average. And this is not what the people are using. This is the water that is treated and supplied, but nobody gets it. Sean Jacobs, in an article titled South Africa's Water Infrastructure Collapse, and published last week in the Daily Investor says, South Africa has double the amount of liquid leakages of any industrialized economy on earth, with 50% of all treated water never reaching the end consumer. This is an indictment on this ANC government. We know that almost all free state municipalities are completely dysfunctional, bankrupt, and 57% of senior positions are vacant. How on earth do we think that we can build infrastructure and supply good water and sanitation services in such an environment? Speaker, our municipalities are the crisis. Our municipalities are the crisis. In a water-scarce province, we simply cannot afford to play games with this critical resource. I recently asked an official at a water treatment plant what tests he did on the water before it was distributed and what chemicals he was using to treat the water. He is the process controller at the treatment plant and he could not answer my questions. He did not know what he was testing for or what he was treating the water with. This is a highly technical field which requires a great understanding of what exactly is being done and why. I was not surprised when the first cases of cholera were identified in that area, exactly as I warned in this house last year. Clearly, with five dams which are nearly full, it is not the lack of water that is the problem. The problem is the capacity of officials to properly manage water treatment plants and wastewater treatment plants. The care of this critical resource on which our lives, our health, and our economy depend 
is in the hands of incompetent cadres. The management of our water treatment plants and wastewater treatment plants is a science, is a science based on risk-based quality monitoring and analysis of data sets and chemical compositions. It is not simply a job that anyone can do. It is complicated. It needs scientists and engineers. The sooner we begin to understand that cadre deployment and corruption in this critical function is threatening our lives and livelihoods, the better for our province and its people. The Department of Water and Sanitation in its report states, water services authorities need to appoint skilled and qualified process controllers as per the draft regulation 813. Also, preventative maintenance programs with skilled maintenance personnel need to be implemented and funded to prevent unnecessary breakdowns. This is a quote from the Department of Water and Sanitation. Speaker, in budget debates in this House, we were told that this will be the year of infrastructure. But what we see is that after six months, only 11% of MIG grants have been spent. Words about infrastructure is cheap. As President Biden said last year, don't tell me what you value, show me your budget and I'll tell you what you value. We say, show us the implementation of infrastructure spending, then we will know that you are serious. We will believe you when we see this provincial government actually budgeting and implementing solutions. We are not swayed by words. Soon, when the Democratic Alliance runs this province, we will make sure that the provision of reliable and clean water is the number one priority. We will budget and implement. This will grow our economy, protect jobs, and the health of our free state people. The report by the Department of Water and Sanitation to Parliament in June this year contains three pages of solutions for the collapse of water and sanitation in the Free State. I dare all of you to read it. Thank you. Honourable Pumana. Honourable Speaker, the Premier, members of the Legislature, I want to start by saying South Africa is a better country to live in now than it was before 1994. You must put that in mind. Speaker, the debate is a public education. It's a pity that Honourable uh, Clute went out when he has introduced this debate. And it's an awareness campaign also that we want to give to Honorable Clute and other opposition members about where we come from and what the ANC-led government has done. We all know that the ANC-led government has inherited a government that was meant to dictate based on a colonial apartheid system. Every infrastructure designed and made to serve the few than the larger population. So this government responsibilities continue to redress the colonial injustice, including the special apartheid planning on water infrastructure. It is a public knowledge in this country that water crisis was caused and orchestrated deliberately by a government that, it, that thought it would never go out of power. Hence, the water infrastructure was designed to cater for the few. 
ba bang ba na ka fela re ba isa ko mahaeng go di homeland ba ilo ga metsi ka di MR ba gemetsi go se di be go di kwetseng that what was happening because of the racial segregation that time speaker after the reckless battle of the total liberation of the people the first democratic government emerged and part of the issues that were immediate were immediate was addressing water access inequalities water an important element in the life of a human being that's why in the constitution it was put on your bill of rights chapter 2 metsi ke bophilo the first democratic understood the first democratic government understood and continue to understand that water sector plays a central role in the human rights, poverty reduction, elimination of inequalities, peace, justice, and environment ecosystem, including everything that support or medicine. This was exactly 14, 14 years before the United Nations explicitly recognized the human rights to water at the United Nations General Assembly in 2010. This is a demonstration that the government of today continue to play a vital role in the development of the world. Furthermore, the United Nations Agenda for Sustainable Development and its 17 Sustainable Development Goals adopted in September 2015 by the General Assembly provide a global vision to end poverty hunger, protect the planet from degradation, ensure prosperity for all, and foster peace, just and inclusive societies for 2030. That's the vision. The exclusion of black people in their homelands on water infrastructure planning and design, it was done deliberately to unevenly distribute water ac across the country excluding major majority of the people or the population access to clean, safe, and quality water for their development as an ethnic group to suit and fit the minority agenda. Since then, significant progress has been made on access to water and sanitation by the ANC-led government. But water inequalities remain. Just, just take a look. Who is residing along the river banks of the Orange River? The majority of people who are staying there, who are owning land there, who are having a system of irrigations there. None of the people, uh, black people are part of that. The system it was meant in that way. The ANC led government continues to redress the question of inequality, especially in water access inequalities. The government program on water access equalities is seen on a national water resource strategy of 2013 with a primary goal to equality and redistribution. The South African official development indicators for sufficient water access as per the household with at least 25 liters of potable water per person per day within 20 meters of a household, not interrupted for more than seven days per day. That was the report of the monitoring and evaluation in 2015, so that everybody in South Africa must have this access of water. The ANC led government has led to the level of water access in South Africa has improved. Note that since the advent of democracy, an increase from 62% in 1994 to 86% in 2014. That's what the monitoring and evaluation said in their report. Today, over 80% of households in South Africa has access to piped water, and this is either inside their dwelling or, or inside their yards through an intervention of the government of the day. The proportion of households relying on the piped water 
source outside of our yard or community stand has decreased. Harsabona, but by the bed, Amaremola by the by the Hamiti by the city being. Reactricity how Finana Lebon. Nati at Leba too. This is evident as in 1996. 19.6% of households relied on such source. But by 2022, this figure had fallen to 8.9%. This is a progress, honorable members. But we should state and admit that in the country, despite more progress that is happening in our country, it is important to note that certain regions, especially provinces that have a large number of areas classified as rural still faces challenges in accessing pipe and in challenges of historical because of the way they were planned. However, we should note that household depends on water, vendors or tankers as their primary water source showed an increase from 1.9% in 2020 in 2001 to 5.8% in 2022. The problem of water in South Africa is not a sole responsibility of government to address. It is an required all stakeholders in the water sector to play their part in protecting water resource, conserve management, and efficient use of water. The crisis of water in this country has significant impact on the well-being of all of us, economic growth and development of the society. Health in the country vision of 2030 will project what should be achieved by then. Let me state that the National Development Plan Vision 2030 commands that affordable and reliable access is efficient, safe water, hydro hygienic sanitation of socioeconomic growth, and the well being with due regard to the environment is a priority to the government. The segregation black people experience in the country is has a far reaching effect that realized by the government of today that inequalities on water infrastructure development were also controlled and channeled towards the interest of the minority. The ANC led government inherited a water infrastructure that does not speak to the entire population on demand and supply. Health problem of water and sanitation are squarely placed on a water infrastructure that is made and designed for the few, but now it has to service the entire population regardless of the class, gender, color, or the skin, or geolocation. Some of the strategies that are done by the ANC led government is that is the Lesotho Highland Water Project Phase 2. It is a critical to water security and water delivery system. It's augmenting water supply to South Africa, and I must say, tell you so that that water we are paying for it, it includes a hydropower generation system to enhance electricity generation of Lesotho, and then that is also paid by the South African government. It is one of the largest development projects globally involving complex gen engineering. In the free state, the Department of Water and Sanitation has 10 billion project to build a major pipeline from the Harib Dam to augment water supply in Mangaou. And the project is planned to be completed by 2028. In addition, the department is implementing a 1.7 billion project to upgrade wastewater treatment works and water distribution network in Malutia Pofung area. And this project is planned to be completed by June 2025. All these interventions and initiatives are intended to achieve the following. One, the universal equ equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all two access to adequate and equitable sanitation 
hygiene for all, and end up defection playing special attention to the need of women and girls and those who are vulnerable. Lastly, Honorable Chair, Honorable Speaker, it's all our duty, irrespective of our color, class, gender, to protect and restore water-related ecosystem. This include mountain, How my man go case at an intervention of Kasham? You will see the the role played by ecosystem, the mountains, ensuring that the water flows to where we need it. Lenele le bekas photo man, you you will see this thing that we are talking about. We must also protect the forest, wetlands, and disencourage people to put the structure on the wetland because it will make sure that we don't get water that we are supposed to get. And also protect the rivers and the lakes and ensure that we build reservoirs to capture this water before it goes into the oceans. If we can master that, we'll be the masters of ensuring that every South African will have water wherever he is or she is. South Africa is a better country to live in now than it was before 1994. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable John Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Kleinons spoke a lot about the facts and how it affects the water sector in the free state. I'm going to deal with some of the fallacies that the ANC speakers spoke about regarding the water resources and the management of water resources in the free state. Honourable Speaker, I don't think anyone can deny the deprivation that took place before 1994 during the apartheid era. No one denies that. And everyone acknowledges that 1994 we saw a sudden increase in service delivery regarding water, sanitation, housing and other services to previously deprived communities. But then this suddenly stood still. And why did it stand still? It stood still because of the CADA deployment policy that was implemented that deprived our municipalities and our other spheres of government of skills. And it stood still because of the massive corruption that took place, which we saw at the Zondo Commission, where our own Premier testified. That's why it stood still. So when one does introspection, one must perhaps look at yourself through you to the ANC members. I heard some of the members talking about irrigation. Now, Honorable Speaker, Land reform and the reform of the agricultural sector was supposed to take place, but why didn't it take place? Go and look at the McClanty Commission report. They say there why it didn't take place. It didn't take place because of corruption, because of a lack of support to the beneficiaries, and because of the channeling of resources to elites. That is why reform hasn't taken place there. But I also want to say, that you cannot racialize food consumption. Everyone needs food in order to survive, just like you need water to survive. And at the same time, you should not racialize food production, because that's what the ANC want to do. And if they want to affect consumption, they must continue racializing and implementing policies that affect production negatively. And let's talk about the irrigation, the dams that the ANC are talking about and which were also mentioned by Honorable Kleinans, and I think Honorable Kluter too. When were those dams built? When has the ANC in this new dispensation built a new dam? 
We're still waiting for that dam to happen. The Lesotho Islands Project 2 is not in South Africa. It's an international project. And phase one was fraught with corruption. I hope phase two isn't going to have the same levels of corruption as phase one. But the free state is a dry province. And South Africa is a dry country. Only 3% of South Africa's land is highly fertile. 13% is arable and 69% is good for grazing only. That is the fact regarding the free state. It is dry. If it wasn't for the irrigation, you would not have the food in the room next door when you go out now and again to go and eat. That is the fact. But the ANC come with a fallacy that it's because of race or it's because of something that happened in the past. Honorable Speaker, let's look at some of the other issues that were raised. The Fikupatsu Dam, and the, let's also bring in the Metsi Matsu Dam. Instead of fixing the salt, a tender went out at Metsi Matsu to build a huge resort. Hundreds of millions of rands spent there. Where is that resort today? It is collapsing because it was never used. So instead of using that money to desort the, Fikupa, the Fikupatsu Dam, the money was used so that someone could get a tender to build a resort that has never been used. And I'm sure the NEC who comes from there knows that. So don't come here and blame people and things that don't exist. These are fallacies that you are creating. Honorable Speaker, Water is the biggest source of fragility in this province. And let's look at the impact on our economy. Why is it that the free state has the highest increase in unemployed that, people in the last year? 70,000. Because our local municipalities cannot supply the water and the services to attract investment. And that is why the SEZ have mentioned time and again in the committee in this legislature that they are struggling to attract investors because that municipality is unable to provide basic services like water. And your economy swirls around water, Honorable Speaker. We must recognize that. But at the same time, the Western Cape, and laugh again because you always do, the Western Cape in the last year has 305,000 new jobs. Why? Because they take services such as water seriously. Cape Town had a water crisis, but they managed that crisis. We have a water crisis, but the ANC is unable and unwilling, I think, in most instances, to face their own shadow and deal with those crises. That is the bottom line. Honorable Speaker, they mustn't stand here and blame other people. They must look at themselves because they are the main source of the problem. We used to make fun and say that the ANC are like two minute noodles. You just add water and then it's our turn to eat because that's what the ANC's policy is. Well, I would like to tell you there is no more water. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. you may reply. Honourable members, uh, please order. In terms of the rules, you may not converse loudly. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker, uh, the Premier, Chair of Chairs, Chief Whip, and Honourable Members. Uh, I just want to thank Honourable Trude to bring this very important topic to the House. But I think the intention was not okay. You can't bring such a sensitive matter, the matter that concerns our people, and start to play politics with it. We just need to be uh, honest to ourselves that politics will not resolve the water crisis, but an honest uh, appreciation of what happened in the past, where are we, 
and what brought us to all these challenges that uh, Honorable Jackson has also raised here. The second thing is that you must, at all material times, have facts, and facts, uh, the manner in which they have been illustrated is that they always look at what causes these things, the problem, before you can resolve that problem. You need to look at the causes. So the water crisis started when the few were enjoying this and the majority were then subjected to use this thing as a commodity. When you start to commodify water, you're making it very difficult for the other part of the population not to access it. So that's where the problems start. So whether you talk infrastructure, whether you talk just in household water, I can tell you that most of you may be on the side here. I'm not sure about Brown and Honorable uh, Ngangisa, but I'm definitely sure that there could be one or two swimming pools. And some of us here, we grew up in an area where you only have one water tap. Not even access to water inside the house. But all of you, you grew up with access to water inside the house. So when you address the infrastructure, you address it on the basis of what happened in the past. So these are the facts, but I'm happy that we have brought this particular topic in the house. The second thing, Honorable Clean Hands, it is not true that before, or it is true. Honorable, let say it's Honorable Clean Hands. Honorable Clean Hands. And address her through me. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, Honorable. It is not true, it is true that the matter before us, it should not be a matter that we play games with. But we must also appreciate that we can't also play politics. I'm worried about the manner in which, from your side, you have been illustrating all these things, but in the main is that give us the chance as DA uh, will fix this thing. You are failing to fix Langa. You are failing to fix Kukuletu. You are failing to fix many townships in the Eastern Cape. And not because it is because you don't have the capacity, but because of the administration that happened in the past that have denied our people the infrastructure. So it's not your issue. It's not our issue. It has nothing to do with of who is in the administration, whether it's DA, whether it's the ANC. The problem of water scarcity, it has its own causes. One of the causes are planetary issues. The climate change is one of them. The second one is the issue of the aging infrastructure. It happens throughout the country. It does not only affect three states. That is why from 2015 to 2018, Western Cape and in particular Cape Town experienced the most drought. They were saying from the 400 years there was never a zero day in Cape Town. But during that period, you have a zero day. The zero day is a point where Cape Town had to live without water for a day. So you can't therefore, it was the administration, but you can't come here and chest our, you know, and boast up with our chest and say, hey, it was the administration. The issue is the infrastructure and the planetary issues. The second assumption, Honorable, it's not true that when a person does not respond to your question, it is because they are incapable of doing the work. Honorable, it could be that your uh, question was irrelevant. Please pause, Honorable MEC. Um, Thank you, Honorable Speaker. While the MEC is talking about questions, I just want to know, will he take a question? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, I won't ask him. The reason being that, honorable members, this is not a debate. A debate, you are here to contest ideas and win. This is a discussion. No, 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 go to, go, go to, to rule 71. It's a discussion. As such, I cannot allow uh, uh, those things that you do, the rules of debate on this. In fact, the, question, the issue of asking a person if he will take a question, uh, it's not even in the rules. So this matter is not a debate, this is a discussion, and I 
I request and challenge you to open your rule book. You'll see what I'm talking about. Proceed, Honorable MEC. Order, Honorable Chabala. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I was still not going to take that question because of Wanda, the, the day zero. Uh, uh, Honorable uh, Tankasi, that is what I always, I'm, I'm sorry, Honorable Makum. What I all, that is what I always have a problem with you. You take a podium. You say whatever you want to say. But when the other person takes a podium and speak like you did, Honorable Members, please, you are disturbing me. Honorable Chabalala, stop what you are doing. Honorable Dangosin, how? Honorable Dangosin, stop what you are doing. When you take this podium, you say whatever it is that you want to say, but when somebody dares to do the same, then you want to respond. Do what that person was doing when you were on the podium. Don't say a thing. Proceed, Honorable MEC. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I was just saying to Honorable that it is not true that when a person does not respond to your question, it is because they are incapable. You must also understand that your question will have been irrelevant. I'm one person who don't respond to irrelevant questions. So Joe and inspect your question as to whether it was a relevant question to the person, and then you can come to a conclusion. The other thing I know that you don't usually know how our cultures were treated with each other. The first thing before you can even ask any question, you must ask about how the person is. It could be the fact that you might have missed that one. Once you have missed that one, I can tell you we are not going to get enough. Honorable MEC, don't respond to Honorable Jankerson. No, no, I'm not here. Reply. I'm, I'm, I'm with Honorable Clay. Clay Nance. Clay Nance. Clean hands. You also spell quite, quite different, so I don't think. <laughs> I'm, I'm because she said she came here that she asked one guy a question and then this guy did not respond and therefore this guy was incapable. How, how do you base your effect on just not being given an answer? You're not being given an answer because one thing is that your question might have been irrelevant. That's what I was responding to. Let me proceed to the subject of today. To accept that water is a human right, it needs to be managed as a common good. Considering water as a political scoring or means of electionary machinery by some is a very unfortunate thing. Water is essential for human beings, irrespective of race, disability, and our social status. In South Africa has a long history of enormous differences and inequalities regarding service delivery, including access to water. Under the apartheid regime, a high level of inequality was a trend in the access to water, a development that favored the minority white populations and unfairly disadvantaged the black rural majority in most of our communities. One scholar made this observation, I quote, Commodification of water will derail the achievement of the strategic development goals by the UN and hamper efforts to solve the global water crisis already further exacerbated by the triple planetary crisis, the crisis of climate change, nature, and biodiversity loss. And included to that, I've also made the observation that toxic pollution and the in unwillingness by some in the leadership to resolve water crisis is going to cause a lot of problems. Water crisis, already further exacerbated by these triple planetaries, it has its own issues. Although since 1994, there have been great strides to mitigate the apartheid conditions, that of ensuring that all the people access water, but there are still challenges. Challenges that are caused mainly by the past painful legacy, but also the current challenges of which some members have also reflected too. One of them is the aging infrastructure. When you don't maintain the infrastructure, you leave it, but it is also aging. 
definitely water crisis is going to be the results of the day. And this does not need any political party to resolve, but it needs the willingness of our people, managers, and people who are qualified to do the work, to do exactly what is expected, just to maintain the aging infrastructure or replace the aging infrastructure. How current experiences reflect a similar consequence as did the unfair discriminatory practices of the apartheid regime merits needs a serious scrutiny. In addition, it is a rare discussion that Honorable Clute has raised here. It is a rare discussion because the way in which the principles of equality and non-discrimination may be deployed in responding to the lack of access of sufficient water and drinkable water to the entire population differs from each other in terms of our race groupings. Some because they only have one, just one, pipe leak and they forget that there is an informal settlement totally and completely without infrastructure of water. They start to make the loudest noise. So I'm happy that the consciousness start to ring in your minds that people must live with water because now you are affected. And the reason you are affected, it is because the current government administration is aiming at giving all the people the water. Our starting point is to acknowledge that there are challenges within the entire value chain. Resources have been available but some have not been optimally used by some of the municipalities. It's an acknowledgement. We have reflected on it. We are not making any favor to any municipalities. So it's not true that we are hiding something. It is a fact that some municipalities are not optimally utilizing the share that has been given to them. And there are reasons why. For instance, in the areas of Tabu Mufutangan, you will know by now that there are people who are deliberately sabotaging the infrastructure because they want to privatize water. They want water to be given by Jojo's to our people. And these people, they then start to destroy infrastructure. Some are found in the leadership, some are found in the administration, but some are just pure thugs in the locations who are making our people to, to suffer. So these are some of the realities. The second reality is how the milk is being shared. The truth of the matter is that between the demand and the supply, you still have, and the economics will tell you, we still have the high demand in relation to what we can supply. What we supply, we've got limited resources, but the demands are so limitless. And this is because of the growth of the population. This will also sound a reality if I talk about Kuguletu, the informal settlement that are, are increasing the same way that informal settlement are increasing in Butsabe. It has an impact on the infrastructure and water distribution. We have, however, had entered into discussion between COCTA and the Department of Water and Sanitation. And some of the challenges identified by members in this house have found solace in most of the remedial actions that we are proposing here. Number one, we have proposed that there has to be a discussion between ourselves so that we identify these challenges that have been set here regarding water service supply, and we conclude that the following are remedial measures. Some are of a short term, but some are of a longer term. Number one is that MIG by all municipalities should be, and there has to be a directive that they need to be issued, a non-compliance issued by DWS or Department of Waters and Sanitation, there has to be consequence management. We can't sit any longer without ensuring that there is consequence management. Number two, municipalities be assisted through MIG in 2024-2025 financial year to develop infrastructure assets management plans as contained in the DORA MIG framework. Part of the problem is that there's no proper assets management within our municipalities. Number three, the Department of Water Sanitation through Water Service Infrastructure Grant should augment the MIG, especially where there are limited budgets to address water challenges. Number four, 
the municipal infrastructure of South Africa also should play also a, 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 a provateral role in ensuring that technical support and technical reports are submitted to us as COCTA so that we meet the required standards. War on leaks needs to be resuscitated, and those who were trained by the CITAS on water and energy CITA be recruited back to assist some of the municipalities that are experiencing the leaks. Recruit the professional and personnel that have the required skills and academic credentials to take care of the water plants. Part of the problem is that some of the people who are working within our water plants are not people who are supposed to be necessarily there. So it's something that we need to fix. Number four, which also I wish EFF was here, the proper planning of our towns. The issue of every time asking or instructing people to informally or illegally place themselves on areas where there is no infrastructure. It also has an impact on the water supply. And this thing makes it difficult for any administration to control this uh, issue of uh, the informal settlements that are not being regularized, number one, but number two, they are without infrastructure. But number last is the issue of proper planning by our municipalities, towns, and all the departments to ensure that in our IDPs we are including a proper infrastructure and the maintenance of those infrastructure. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Thank you. Uh, Honourable Members, the reply by Honourable NC Makume concludes the discussion for today. This brings us to the end of the business of the House, and the House shall now adjourn until the 21st of November 2023. The House is adjourned. I thank you.